time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our lives, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Hour Live, June 7th on a Friday. Hope everybody's having a good day. Volatility getting crushed down three and a half percent. VIX at 12.16, SP up four, NASDAQ unchanged, Russell down about one percent, Dow pretty flat, gold down three percent, silver down six and a half, notes and bonds are red, 10 year yield up three and a half percent, oil slightly red, natural gas up three and a half. Soybeans, corn, and wheat all red. Euro and the pound red. Bitcoin down 2.5%. Kind of frustrating day for me. So my first morning one-to-one and three-twos got stopped after being fairly close to 30%. My one DTE got stopped. Uh, my price action trades, a little bit green. Had a few little... Small losses, one 540 win. My rut hedge is winning. I've got a price action trade on that's up 24%. I've already reduced. I've got another one that I'm about to reduce. It's at 17%. My quad 40 just fired on my challenge portfolio. My 3 2 1 to 1 and 1 DTE all got stopped. And then another 3-2 got stopped. I was at my 8% limit, so I shut down any new re-entries. My 1-to-1 uh, got stopped out for a profit. So that has been my day. Uh, I did, And then I, uh, I posted my RIC, my discretionary RIC and RUT. I only closed one of those contracts, though. I've still got four, and now it's bounced back to break even. So hopefully it stays below the current level. But that's the kind of day it's been, my friends. I do have a transformer and NDX that I kind of got caught on a little bit. So I've got some risk at the current level. So I really need a down move, or I'll try to clean up this risk as we get closer to the close of the day. The VIX vertical that I've that I've had on, I've got an order to close half at a buck seventy. It's currently trading at a dollar sixty six. So if we push to new all time highs by the end of the day, that should hit. Here's my two remaining price action trades. I've got a five lot on one and a two lot on the other left. So here's both of those together on the uh, 45s and 60s and the 30s and 60s. Quad 40, I'm on the 55, 70s. No Chad today. He's running around the uh, cornfields of Nebraska. So you're stuck with me. SPX had a little push down out of the gate and then ripped pretty much nonstop without any pullbacks up to the expected move. Had a pullback, grinded back up, pullback. Now it appears to be grinding back up. Today's a neutral day, so I'm not doing any three tranche power hours. Just I, I may add another... Uh, price action trade if I if I get to a point of doing that, but I'm going to stick with the two that I've got on currently. My rut hedge, so that's my Rick. 
My rut hedge that expires today. is just just outside the break even so it's profitable by a few hundred need it to stay lower no wooga because i had conflicting strikes on my current price action trade so no wooga meech what are you doing back this is like two days in a row for you are you are you back to you know hanging out with us Oh, you're in the car. Nice. I like it. Uh, El Piero, you can see the quad 40 trade in my trade plan. It's a, uh, it's basically, it's kind of like a, think of it as kind of like a one DTE Wooga. It's got tight strikes. Uh, it does have a stop though. $3 profit target, $3 strike. Yeah, that, that red head is the one I put on yesterday. Correct. And then my my discretionary rut rick that I posted earlier. It hit. Uh, let's see. I got into that one at six forty five, and then I I had a profit target in, and I I took it off, and I was like, I'm gonna go for a little bit more. So I just I closed one contract at ten bucks. Let's see where? Yeah, I just closed one contract at ten dollars. Hoping for some more downside, and then it bounced. So we'll see what I can do with the rest of it. So I saw some of you guys were uh, hanging out on the Roaring Kitty live stream. How'd that go? GME down 40%. Guess not that great. I saw the screenshot of his current position. It's insane. That is nutty. I'm with you, Naughty Dog. Trying to decide if I'm too over leveraged on my zero DTE and he's sitting there with $350 million in GameStop drinking a beer. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, lucky what I was what I mentioned when I posted it today was you know, SPX and NDX were all basically just hovering right near yesterday's close. Right here is when I entered this morning. And I thought, you know, it, it just feels like it's kind of an inflection point. Either it's going to rip or it's going to fall. And really, my thesis was incorrect. I mean, it pushed up to the expected move, but not enough to book profits. And I, I booked profits on the way down on that little flush. So my thesis was wrong, but it was still ended up being a winner. You know, we just had so many little whippy, whippy moves that trading those, trading those ricks would have been profitable. So figured I'd dip my toes in. I'm getting close to 20% on one of my price action trades here. If we can, there it is. There we go. Got the stop reduced. So here's my quad 40. It's 
So like I said, it's kind of like a Wuga, but it's just on the one DTE options. And I've got a profit target and a, and a stop on it of three bucks. Use a little price action down move for my price action trades. I could use a big down move for my ruts. So ideally for me, we sit right here until the end of the day and then we tank. So stocks, so yeah, GME's down 40%, AMC's down 16, so the meme stock's not having a good day. Coinbase down 3%. Robinhood down three. On the green side, Pinterest up two and a half percent. All the big boys kind of mixed and flat, up or down less than 1%. Say 40% on one. Looking at the chart, it doesn't seem like it should have been a day with the uh, stopouts that I had, but I entered right in the morning after that big flush. So the big up move could not withstand that uh, degree of upside. Yeah, I will start putting my double calendars on here in about 12 minutes, but no, yeah, no five, seven, because I don't want my shorts on FOMC day, but I'll do a three, five, three, six, three, seven, four, seven, six, seven. Well, maybe I am just looking at it from a uh, narrow perspective. I would try it out. I mean, it's, it, peaked above the upside expected move, but it's basically stayed inside the expected move. Just the point of entry from the bottom. I got in at the very bottom on my morning trades was the issue. You know, if I got in, once it pushed up a little bit, I probably would have survived any stops. Like if I would have got in, I mean, this is a big if, right? But had I got in kind of a, around yesterday's close should have been fine haven't had any full stop outs on price action trades And I just got stopped for a profit after 40% on that one. It's 
So let's see if we can let this last one cook for a bit. So for my double calendars, the order I'll be putting those on, I'll do the four, seven, six, seven first. And I'll do the three, six. Then I'll do the four, five. Then I'll do the three, five. Then I'll do the three, seven. Mm -hmm. Got my good friend Cobalt 100 in the office today. <laughs> Learning the ropes. So everybody doing this weekend? Anything fun? I am baseball free for once. So I'm not sure I, I know what to do with myself. After we leave power hour, we're going to go do a little happy hour with some old buddies. <laughs> Had a boy, Meech. I like it. Ah, oh, Shane Gillis, DG. Have you watched the uh, Have you watched the Netflix show Tires? It's pretty funny. Yeah, Ryan. I always post my calendars in the Calendar Trade Channel, and I'll let you know when I post those. Starting in uh, about eight minutes, I'll start posting my first ones. I, has anyone watched the 7M TikTok dancing cult documentary? That's kind of wild. Yes, thank you, Ken. Yeah, uh, Ryan, in the positions and updates to you, I, every morning I post. So the, the uh, calendars I plan to trade are, are there as well. And of course, they're on my trade plan. Uh, it's on Netflix discount. Good guess, MRP. <laughs> no, it's about, I don't know. I, I don't want to, if you're going to watch it, I don't want to ruin it, so. About some TikTok dancers that joined a cult. <laughs> no bounce for me. I'm dead centered. I need a stay and then flush lower. My NDX needs a flush lower as well. Madam Butterfly, any Transformers for you today? All right, team. Meech is on the team. Stay in flush. Uh, discretionary strangles. Oh, yeah, my price action trades, no. Those are just zero DTE trades. Those are those are something that I'm still kind of testing with the uh, trading view webhook. As soon as I kind of work out all the nuances and stuff, I'll be sharing that with you guys. I 
I got caught on my transformer trying to go go short here. It's right on the break even of that vertical, but I need some downside. So for next week, got a big week. Nothing on Monday. There's a 10-year bond auction on Tuesday at noon. Wednesday's the big day. CPI, pre-market, FOMC in the afternoon. Actually, you know what? I did not. I don't think I added that to the live stream schedule for Wednesday. Yeah, I did not. So I have power hour on the on the calendar, but we will not do power hour. We will do, we'll stream live during the FOMC on Wednesday. I'll, I'll get that updated this weekend. And then Thursday, the next morning, pre-market PPI, along with Yellen speaking and William speaking and a 30-year bond auction. And then Friday, consumer sentiment in the morning. All right, so I'm going to start with my 4-7 double calendar. All right, so just posted my 4-7 in the calendar channel. So the 6-7 is the only one that I'm holding through FOMC, potentially. Getting a little, a little flush coming. All right, so I got my four seven and six seven posted.
That's what we call recency bias, Chris. Yeah, yeah, listen, I'm doing the six, seven, not doing the five, seven. I moved my profit target on that rat Rick to 12 bucks from 10 and it would have hit 10. Now it's bouncing. Come on back down. Nice yoga delic. VIX still kind of hovering near the lows of day. That VIX vertical. I've had my order in at a buck seventy all day. So I got to a dollar sixty-nine, but didn't didn't quite hit it. Uh, it's going to be all about the implied volatility in the options. So they're definitely going to look weird, like especially like the three, five, you're going to look at it and be like, there's no way this can make money, but it can. And that's because of the contango. If you look at the implied volatility in the option chains, look on Monday, it's 6.89%. Whereas the Wednesday options, because of FOMC and CPI are at 126 that's major contango. And then the, you know, any option chain after CPI and FOMC is going to be high too, because that's built in as well. Yeah. And the six, seven, super cheap. Cause look at the difference in volatility between the six day and the seven day. It's basically the same. Remember, we're selling the front options. We're buying the back. So, so, so if the volatility is cheap in the front and expensive in the back, that's going to create that wonky looking risk graph. If we have backwardation, if the volatility in the front is expensive and the back is cheap on the risk graph, it's going to look really good. But that doesn't always mean good things. So like the three, five, if I, 
I'm going to, I'm not going to do it in, in this account. I'm not going to put it on yet, but if I look at the three, five, You know, it's trading for 32 bucks. And if you look on the risk graph, it's going to look like this. <laughs> I mean, look at that thing. That looks like the best you can do is negative $1,000. Right? Looks terrible. But I've actually had some of my biggest winners when you get that big contango like that because we're putting our longs on the event day. So, in reality, um, you know, we might get some increased implied volatility on those longs leading up to FOMC, which is going to make this profit. But on the risk graph, that's why you got to be careful with risk graphs on calendar trades. Ooh, got filled. All right, so now my transformer looks like this. So I can't lose unless we expire in this little area. I might be able to clean that up before the end of the day. Yeah, Dev D, the calendars are part of the pro membership. So I post those in the calendar channels, but you, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to see them with just the day trading membership. They're not day trades. But yeah, I do a lot of them on Fridays. Friday entries. Six, seven, I put on has already jumped up a few percent. That was quick. Quad 40 is not doing so hot. Needs a little bounce. Usually this thing pays the best on Fridays using the Monday options. All right, next up, three six.
All right, Meech, don't be a stranger. Enjoy your weekend. I'm getting close to 40% on this one. Well, I don't know what to do with this rut rick. I definitely don't want it to turn into a loser and it's we're looking a little bouncy. Did not play it very well. I'm just going to close it. All right, so a little, little Rick winner. You can only get assigned on futures at expiration, Jay Russell. Yeah, we definitely need a bounce in gold. So much for being, getting back up to all time highs. Forty percent on my price action. All right, got the stop reduced on that one. Yeah. 
Yep, pretty sure. Unless uh Let's see. I'm trying to remember now. You got me thinking. Is GC American style? I don't think so. I'll, I'll have to double check on that when I get a chance, but. All right, so next up is the four five. Twenty five above. Wow. It's a big debit for that four five. Mara, are you doing the four five? It doesn't model well, that's for sure. But of course, I just discussed why on the when I showed that example of the three five. But um, yeah, I'm going to do it smaller than normal. Just going to do a few lots. I've got some decent size going on the other one, so. at 955. So the last two I'm doing are the 35 and 37.
I just posted the three five. And I'm going to get my 3.7 out of the way so I can focus. So, the Delta calls. Oh. I'm hurting for strikes here. Let's see. Build. I'll be done with my calendars. Come on. All right, done with El Calendors. Yeah, thank you, Neil. I thought, yeah, that's kind of what I remembered, that there was a couple in there. Oh, Tasty shows, shows GC monthly, weekly as American style. I mean, keep in mind, we're, we're barely in the money, so I'm not worried about ex or assignment there. If, if I do get assigned, I'll just close the trade to remember it's, it doesn't, uh, doesn't change your, your risk. You still have the other piece, but I would like to avoid it, but assignment is not that big of a deal unless it happens at expiration. Yeah, I, I remember that now. The quarterlies are American style. All right, I'm dead centered on my last price action. Just got one lot left.
55 butterfly. Trading for about a dollar twenty-five. Right between strikes. VIX at 12.2. Are we going to get back down into the 11 handle? I would assume after FOMC we will. Unless there's some kind of surprise. Eighty percent profit targets at a buck ten. It's trading for a dollar seventy. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel my VIX order. My quad forty has recovered a little bit. Still tiny red. MOC number in five minutes. I need my NDX to move away from 1910, where it is right now. This would be the worst possible close for NDX. Pretty good chance it doesn't close there, but could. You stay down, my rut hedge will close positive. It's currently up about 500. Need SPX to stay up just a little bit longer to hit my 80%. <laughs> Is that how that works? You get assigned on the Wooga and Wooga shows up at your door? <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. I'd like to meet Wooga one day. I don't know about in the... I don't know by getting assigned Wooga. <laughs> I like it, Elliot. That's a good one. Fifty butterfly trading for a dollar forty.
Madam Butterfly, have you traded any Mahomes on uh, FOMC day? I would imagine it is a very cheap butterfly down to the last minute. Nice discount. Need a little bounce to hit my last profit target here. I'm going to want to close it before MOC. All right, listening for MOC here in about 10 seconds. Oh boy. Looks like Pelosi got the number early. Two point four billion sell side. Two point four billion sell side. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this last one. Well, we're bouncing. I'll give it a minute. Yeah, a little bounce, nice little bounce. Close to hitting profit target. 80%, give it to me. Just gonna get out. It's not quite three billion, but could see some downside action. Got it at a buck fifty, so about seventy-five percent. So my price action trades today made about I don't know fourteen hundred or so. Now I need NDX to get away from the 19.010 level. I need RUT to crash. Still got my quad 40, which is down a little bit. Quad 40 needs a little bounce. And home's in. Forty-five. Put it on the forty-five first. Uh, 
Uh, M and S, you can just pick one. They're the same thing. Sometimes you get filled slightly quicker on one than the other, but same thing. Like if it's between strikes, sometimes I'll put like, if it was between 45 and 50, I might put a 45 on on the put side and a 50 on on the call side just to have them both on in case one gets filled. But otherwise, it doesn't matter which side you pick. Well, I can't do the put side because I would have conflicting strikes. Straight bounce between one eighty two bucks, same as the uh, same as the call side. Five minutes to go. No fill yet. Oh, no, I got to get the fifties on. Build at 210 on the 50s. All right, verticals are in. Only three minutes and 20 seconds left. Time for some last minute Mahomes magic. Need to move away from 50. My NDX is still sitting right where I don't want it either. So I need to move. Need a little last minute move. We'll move down to 45. We'll do it. Can we, get a, can we get a 45? 46, can we get a 45? Yeah, I did re-entries, but I, I hit my limit. So I only I got stopped out for a profit on one of my one-to-ones, but that was the best I did. I got stopped out on a one-to-one, -one, stopped out on a 3-2, stopped out on another 3-2, and I hit my 8% limit, so I shut down the re-entries and just let my remaining one-to-one -one go. Sitting right at 50. We do not want a 50 pin. A 
above 53 or below 47, please. You on the 47 train? <laughs> I am red today. My challenge portfolio is down about 6% in my other account. I had a couple of early stopouts on the 1 DTE, 1 to 1, 3 2. Price action was green. The quad 40 lost 5%. So, yeah, it's a little red. Less than a minute. Need a little move. There you go. Keep coming. Keep her coming. Oh, I got filled on three of my five verticals. So I'm pretty much locked in a profit. I don't know. That's interesting. Anybody else get filled on any verticals? I got filled on three of my five. a little so I got uh, so it looks like I made about on a five lot and got filled on three verticals I made about 350 bucks had that happened before too where I only got filled on a few verticals but it only got down to uh well, I guess it did touch below 45. Let's see that last five minute bar hit a low of 44.85. Yeah. Huh. Anyway. All right. Everybody have a good weekend. We'll be back at it next week. Monday is June 10th. So we'll be streaming live for Zero DTE in the morning at the open and then back for power hour in the afternoon. All right, everybody. Have a good weekend. Cheers.